Hey guys, Joe Tech here uh, from Joe Tech Tips. Today we're going to do a review on the TYT MD380 DMR radio. It's also UHF, so it does analog as well. And today we're going to review it. And what I have here today, I have a bird load. This is an um, 8201, 8201. A uh, 500 watt dummy load. So we're going to be testing out. Not that we need a monster dummy load, but this is what I have for my test gear. For you who have never seen one of these before, this is an oil filled um, 500 watt dummy load for testing transceivers, and um, this is absolutely perfect for my needs. And we're going to use it today to test the output of the TYT um, MD380 walkie-talkie, or HT, or, or whatever you guys want to call it. And I also have an SX600, which we will be using to uh, test the uh, wattage output. We're going to calibrate it in the whole nine yards. we we'll do that in a moment. But before we do that, I wanted to, because this is a review, I've, I've been using it for, you know, Three or four days now since I did the unboxing, and I have to, I still even haven't I still haven't taken the the screen protector plastic screen off. I'm going to keep the radio just that I happen to like that plastic screen on there. It kind of protects it from you know scratches and stuff like that. But I'm sure they make some sort of a piece of glass that I can probably get for that to cover this on on Amazon. But um, I have to say though, for the money. Because most DMR radios cost a fortune, especially Motorola. Um, all, I, I should say, all Motorola DMR radios cost a lot of money. The 6550, the 7550, they, they all are big dollars. And for TYT to make a, I consider that, I'm going to give this an instant awesome rating. Because for the money, just a little over 100 bucks, depending on where you buy it. 95 to maybe 105 is the range. Um, I have to say that this is a kick-ass product. Um, I mean, I'm, on, I'm very new to it. However, the programming part, part of it, you need to have someone who's actually knowledgeable about DMR. Because if you're brand new at it and you have no idea what you're doing, programming the radio is a pain in the neck. You have to create zones. You have to create contacts. You have to create... Bunch, you have to like go in three different sections. I'm not here to talk about the software, but I did have a um, a colleague of mine who was much more knowledgeable about DMR than I am. But I'm just going over the radio itself. It's quite impressive for what it is. Now, again, it's it's a single um, frequency um, radio. In other words, it doesn't do UH. It doesn't do VHF and UHF. It's not a multi-band HT. It just does UHF but also does UHF digital, which is DMR. So for those GMRS fans, and if you're also a ham operator, with a valid, valid GMRS license holder, of course, this radio is perfect because it does GMRS and UHF, like uh, 440, and DMR. It's a home run. So and today we're going to find out how much watts it actually puts out. It claims to be 5 watts, and uh, we're going to give it a shot. So I'm sure a lot of people don't like the Diamond SX600. However, this is the only one I have handy to me right now. I do have a Yesu floating around somewhere, but I can't see it. may be buried in my, my repeater at the moment. But uh, we're going to use this for now as a, as a test bed. And uh, we're going to find out what this thing does. Okay, I'm going to plug this on here. And we want to plug this here like so. And then we're going to put this on the antenna side, because the dummy load, we're pretending the dummy load to be the antenna. And I'm going to cal uh, calibrate it now. A lot of wires here. Now I'm going to put it on a different zone. I'll do a simplex zone so I don't interfere with anybody. Okay, now I'm DMR simplex. So I'm going to calibrate it first. All right, so now we're on uh, analog DMR. 
And we're going to calibrate it. I mean, analog GMRS. Go to power. And it says just under two watts. And that's on the high, high power setting on the radio. Okay, let's go to a different zone. Go to the analog section, let's do some more testing. All right, so it looks like um, now we're now we're on uh, hand bands on UHF, and we're going to calibrate again. Let's see what we do. So just about three watts, and this is on the hand band analog. Go to a different another channel. A little bit higher. Let's calibrate again. Wow, three and a half watts. We're getting better. So it looks like it's between two and three and a half watts. Five watts is, I think, over the top. <laughs> Maybe at the Absolute minimal, like minimal middle of the UHF band is probably the the five watt output. I haven't seen it yet. Up oh, there we go. We're getting further, getting closer here. All right, so let's calibrate one more time. Four watts. Here we go. All right, so maybe it could be a five watt radio, but right now it's only showing four. So we're changing the different frequency. So, all right, so uh, that that's the whole point of this uh, this video is to determine what the output power is of the radio and to review it and get a little better understanding of the features and stuff like that. I like the radio. For a, for a hundred dollar radio, um, that's why I'm giving it a um, um, instant awesome Joe Tech Tips instant awesome rating. I'm going to put it uh, right here. Um, that's what this radio gets. Uh, especially TYT knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, what what I did do, I'm going to show on the screen uh, right here, is that uh, that there is a um, modified firmware on here. It's not the one that came with TYT. And uh, it gives me uh, extra features and functions. There's a couple of features on here that, that you get that is really nice uh, versus the firmware that comes with it. Um, it's really nice. It's a really nice radio. I like it a lot. And, and considering that it actually does do just about 4 watts, 4.2 4 watts output power with this meter. I'm not saying this meter is, you know, this is, you know, it's written in stone. This is what it is, four watts. I mean, this could be off. It could be four and a half watts. It could be closer to five. But we kind of get an, an guesstimate idea uh, based on the frequency range, which is what I thought. So when this, the five watt rating is in the middle of the UHF band, and then that's exactly what it is, and you'll probably get closer to the five watt output. But from, from the looks of it right now, it's, I'm going to call it a four watt radio because that's the highest I've seen so far. So some parts, the DMR side of it, it's more of a, two watt radio and think about it you don't really don't need a lot of wattage in dmr it's digital so you don't need a, a lot of watts to to travel far there is one other drawbacks of the uh of dmr is that it's not always free not like cost money wise meaning that if the channel is in use there is an led on the top of this uh, radio if the led is lit or blinking whatever that means the channel is in use um, you can have multiple torque groups on DMR, but majority of the time they're always in use. 
So you'd be able to transmit on it's going to be slim to none because that's what's happening right now. You hear the, the red light blinks. Oh, now I can get in. Kilo Delta 2, Golf Alpha Golf for radio check, please. See, now the green light is on, but I don't hear anything, so it could be in a different channel, a different talk group, I should say. So be able to talk to somebody. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm finding it difficult, but the radio for DMR is great. We're not talking about the service we're talking on. That's, un, that's unpredictable. Um, but the radio itself kicks butt, and that's what this review was about. So if you guys like this video, thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.